Grotowski and I found ourselves sitting opposite each other in the middle of this whole thing, and we threw the teddy bear back and forth. Yeah. On one, on one level, you could say this is childish. And I gave the teddy bear suck suddenly at my breast, and then I threw the teddy bear to him, and he gave it suck at his breast, and then the teddy bear was thrown up into the air again, in which there was another explosion of form into something. And these, what was it like? You know, this is the... This, there's something like a kaleidoscope, like a human kaleidoscope. The evening was made up of shiftings of the kaleidoscope. Oh, yeah. Baby, look! It's still there, the ladybug. Where? On my head? It's on your shoulder now. Did you see it? I thought it, I thought it oh left. Oh my god, it's right here! Where? Where? Oh, yeah. Hey! My ladybug friend is still That is the cutest thing ever! Yeah, we're friends. Oh. We'll never, we'll never part. Did you not notice? No, it was crawling up <gasps> this. No, I can't hold you because they're the ladybug. Hold my leg. I picked up a ladybug earlier today at a outside. It was an, at an outside, I think. And it's still here. Lady B, we call her. Wait, did you? Wait, no, you, you did. Na did you name her? Lady B. Earlier. Lady B. <laughs> I can't hold you now. You don't normally hold me like I normally. Well, you hold me, but yeah, now we can't. You can't hold me because. It's fine. You, you don't, you're not gonna grab my shoulder. I don't know. It's fine. Is this is this even a ladybug? It's a ladybug. It's an, a yellow one, so maybe it's an old what ladybug that's sent? not red anymore, or maybe it's a young ladybug that what is yet to be red. Spy ladybug. Could be a spy ladybug, but I, I, I don't believe so. I believe that this is a genuine ladybug. Lady B wouldn't be a spy. No, Lady B in the house. No. Oh. Cracking some bars. <laughs> Cracking some bars? <laughs> I don't know how you Do put you bars together. Bars? No, I think you uh, lay bars. Drop bars or drop, drop bar. beats? Probably drop bars. No, yeah, you drop beats and you drop uh, discs, but I don't know if you drop bars. Imbue bars? Okay, all right. Imbue bars. All right. I feel attached now. I don't want to just kick her out. Well, what's gonna happen? We're gonna sleep with a ladybug, and it looks like it's scarier. Those eyes are huger. What are you talking Do about? their eyes get bigger? <laughs> <laughs> it's so scary now. All of a sudden, its eyes were not like that, and that's freaking me out. Its eyes. It I turned can't... from cute to. I was probably devil. feeling threatened. Incarnate. That is so freaky. I didn't know. You want me to get rid of it? All right. You're not gonna like be able to focus. Oh. All right. I'm tired. Oh my what god. Is <laughs> Any who is it? Anyway, we are not in our uniform. If no. you haven't if you yes, haven't it's noticed an unusual uniform. we have a uniform. Yeah. <laughs> we just didn't plan on recording. No. Well, uh, welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're gonna be making sense of life through my dinner with Andre. So there is so much stuff <gasps> in this movie. <sighs> but yeah, we, we were watching my dinner with Andre and if you haven't seen it, it's about a two hour movie of the whole time they're having a very in-depth, deep, intense, I'm trying to think of other words to profound. The profundity of this conversation is off the charts. It's a lot to take in, but that's why we thought, let's just do it even before we finish the movie because we were starting to so have much. a conversation. We were having a it. conversation. We we're like, oh, why don't we just film this? So. Even though I'm exhausted out of my mind, I am exhausted. I felt like I could do it, but now I feel like a car. <laughs> right, let's go. What were we talking about? Okay. Yeah. So, well, I mean, really the synopsis is we got Wally. And Andre, the two characters in the, in the entire movie, and they both work in the theater. And Wally was asked, that kind of out of nowhere, to have dinner with Andre, who he hadn't seen for a couple of years and he was kind of avoiding just because Andre kind of fell off the map and there were rumors of him doing all kinds of crazy things. So Wally was kind of like, I could just go home and have a nice evening, nice quiet evening with my girlfriend. But instead, yeah. I decided to have this dinner with uh, this guy that I don't know what's going to happen, what we're going to talk about. I haven't seen him in a long I time. Seen him a long I heard could be he awkward. has had issues. Yeah, he's got, I heard he has got issues. a lot of yeah. issues and a lot, a lot of rough times. So I don't know why I'm doing this, and it's going to be, I don't know. The reason I was meeting Andre was that an acquaintance of mine, George Grassfield, had called me and just insisted that I had to see him. Apparently, George had been walking his dog in an odd section of town the night before, and he'd suddenly come upon Andre leaning against a crumbling old building and sobbing. And then they get into it, and, you know, at first he's very quiet. The first half of the movie, he's just asking questions now and then, because Andre is just going from one topic to the next, telling about all his travels and all the crises, existential crises and everything he's going through, and all the self-doubt and all the experiences and all the uh, things that he's reflected on and noticed and experienced. So, yeah, and that's it. And then they have the dinner. We haven't even finished it yet. No, finished it is a very movie. long movie. It's yeah. just because I felt like I have never in my life related to a movie as much as I relate to this because the way that they're interacting with each other is the way, is my dream. Mm -hmm. That the world 
could interact this all way all the interact time. With, yeah. um, with each other in that way. Yeah. The things that they discuss about people, about life in general, yeah. about themselves. Yeah. It's stuff that I like to talk about. Mm -hmm. I like the openness between them. It's something that seems to be quite rare, or at least it has seemed to be rare. When we met, obviously. Yeah. Um, we kind of had a My Dinner with Andre conversation exactly. the first day we met. Yeah, the first day we met, yeah. we had like a, a literal My Dinner with Andre <laughs> yeah. conversation. And it was like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> there are yeah. people. Yeah. Like this. Masks came off. There people like this yeah. <laughs> you know i think uh i mean this movie i think could be enjoyable for a lot of people but i think it really hits home for people that find themselves where they struggle to have like at one point basically we kind of stopped around the midpoint when they talk about nowadays it just seems like it's so hard to when interacting going to parties everyone is so indirect and, and telling jokes instead of opening up and sharing and actually letting their guard down and being vulnerable and having taking their persona their public mask off in front of people and then so you just wind up just kind of being confused because you're trying to interact and then connect and be around people but nothing's really happening right yeah that's kind of the part that they've talked about where we kind of stopped it and that, that is something that they kind of is throughout the movie it's one of the big things is just kind of reconnecting with essential things like our human nature or our, our, our and you know uh, the connecting with other people on a very basic fundamental level you know you see this is the thing right yeah. like it's very hard to explain this i realized yeah. this is the the reason i really love this movie because we have these kinds of conversations all the time since meeting we realized you can explain to people what you need what kind of person you are you know as we're talking about this movie and I, how much we identify with it and as we're talking about the fact of things that they bring up, like um, people having masks, what what does that even mean? Right. We feel that way. These people in the movie feel that people have a mask. Right. Um, but some people don't necessarily don't feel like that. Yeah. And in the past, I would say there's no way. There's no way that you don't realize that you have a mask. Right. But who am I to say that? You know what I mean? Maybe there are people who are perfectly satisfied. Yeah with existing on a level that I feel yeah. is superficial and right. which I perceive right. to be them wearing a mask. Yeah. Because I've had lots of experiences, lots of um, relationships. In fact, all, all, basically all of my relationships, everybody, my family, friends, you name it, have always said I'm too emotional or you're just like too intense or you're too deep. Like all the conversations are always just like super just like unpacking life you know tears and that's fine i have no i love that i love connecting with people to the point where we're both crying and i've found that sometimes when people say that i've, I've wondered am i supposed to dial it down because i don't know how to dial it down to the point where people won't assess me as being too intense i spend years trying to figure out how to tone myself down um until i realize that i really don't want to do that i am realizing you know like i don't want to force anyone to be like me yeah. if i find that someone isn't able to connect with me in a way that i'm fulfilled by and in a way that they aren't fulfilled by i think yeah. it's okay to yeah. say that yeah. we're just not different compatibilities we're not it's compatible good. and it's okay to leave yeah. i think that's where people get to where they realize they get to a certain point they're like i need to be around my tribe and that i think for a lot of people means people that exactly it's enjoyable for both people like our brains work the same this is good. This is a good arrangement. People could look at, at how we basically from dawn to dusk, our brains are going crazy and then trying to figure things out or analyze or whatever. And that's not always the most practical or the most useful. And, and some people are like, you know what? Life could maybe be a little easier, more enjoyable if you just kind of go with it. You just, you know, you, like you operate on a different frequency. It's not yeah. necessarily a better or worse frequency. It's just a different frequency. Exactly. And some jobs like, you know, it's, it's part of, I think, growing up too, is realizing that the world might probably wouldn't be better if everyone was like you no matter how you are yeah. it's good that you have people different are like kinds us, of people we're nothing would ever get nothing done nothing would get done because you'd be waking up and you'd just be like is the sky really blue yeah you know, those, that stupid like yeah by the time you've figured that out and realize that you've gotten nowhere people still haven't there's no food for people there's no things being exactly. fixed people or constructed are dying. People, people are, are dying. killing themselves people don't know what we're time still it is trying to figure out why yeah. are ladybugs gendered exactly Sometimes yeah. I'll start a conversation about something and then I'm just kind of like rearing off into, <laughs> and I don't even remember. What was I talking about? What yeah. What is it? And I'll ask yeah. you. Yeah. I'll be like, I don't know, but it's I was okay. going with Let's it. It's okay. Let's just go. Let's yeah. go with it. This is where we're, we're riding down the... Like right now. We're, yeah. we're totally, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> given our experiences, 
we have felt that there aren't a lot of people like us. But then again, maybe someone who is the Different. exact opposite feels the same way. Feels the same way. Because yeah. we never know how people are feeling. Yeah. It actually really drains me to try and be what I think people who are on the opposite end of the spectrum are. Right. Where you're not really like connecting on on the level that other people perceive to be intense right. and overly emotional that drains me the same way that people are drained by how i am <laughs> by me forcing them as far as they're concerned to tap into mm -hmm. emotions that they would prefer not to and that's draining for them but that's great for me i have lots more energy yeah. when i've spent hours with someone yeah. when we're connecting on that yeah, level the when there are tears of everything. Yeah. yeah when there are tears and hugging and embrace and opening up i come home and i'm like you know? Yeah. Jazz. I feel like I talk too much. Why, mm -hmm. you, why don't you talk too much? Well, I, what do you mean? You had things to say. I don't know, but I don't to That's okay. That's what you we're doing. You have to rein me in. <laughs> At one point during the movie, it talks about how things like with technology. He doesn't test, trust technology and how it kind of keeps us in this, this dream world because things are too comfortable and I'm looking around and there are five screens all facing us right now. Oh my god! <laughs> we have four laptops, we have three laptops open, one computer, and then the TV. Sometimes wow. it hits you, you're like, yeah, we are, we are, do have a lot of technology around us all the time, don't we? Like at one point in the movie, he's talking about how other other cultures would probably find, say, I guess, like a lot of uh, how North Americans, or he's talking about people in New York are interacting where it's mostly just, there's no connecting, there's just talking about people's career, you know, what are you doing for your career? Because if you're only worrying about your career, you can kind of go on autopilot. You don't really have to think about all the, the let the self-doubt creep in about like, sh is this actually what I should be doing with my life? Is this what I want to do? Does it make it happy? What do I actually want to do? And like, what do I, what do I care about? You know, people just worry about talking about what they're doing for work. And then they just make a lot of inane jokes and everything. And they don't really talk about anything. And they just laugh instead of mourn when something someone passed away or something serious happens people would rather yeah. just indirectly deal with they don't know how to deal with their emotions so they just laugh it off for example and how other people would find that just weird and, and unhealthy and crazy and then he starts to do these these kind of mimic these laughs and then the waiter behind them is kind of like what's going on right like if four tibetans came together and tragedy had just struck one of the ones and they spent the whole evening going ha 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 Tibetans sort of looked at that and thought that was the most unimaginable behavior. Because he talks about this one point where it's like, it's not necessarily that these two having this deep conversation are better than the waiter, say, right? Oh, yeah. this waiter probably doesn't get what were the essence of, like, the, 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 the intellect and the, the genius that we're discussing right now. You know, he, he lives life differently. And he talk, and Andre talks about it at one point where, you know, he compares, he thinks it's messed up that when he goes into his apartment, the doorman greets him, Mr... I forget his his, yeah. uh, his his last name, Mr. Gregory or something in the yeah. in the movie, and he calls him Jimmy, right? He's like, like I'm treating him, I'm him, I treat him like yeah. a kid because yeah. I use his first name and and kind of like a, a kid kiddish version of James, yeah. and then he calls me Mister, right? And it's like it's kind of he at least compares it to plantation owners, where it's like you know it's treating people as inferior to you by by even just using how they greet you and you greet them, right? And he's saying, here's a guy my age, intelligent guy, good person. And yet I'm treating him like this way and then he's treating me superior, I'm treating him inferior. And we're doing this and just simply because I live in this building and he works at this building. That's where I think a lot of times when it comes to unconscious complexes or unconscious, you know, inferiority complex or unconscious biases or unconscious, you know, they talk again about like how we're all walking around like zombies and everyone's so unconscious. We're, this is even before cell phones and everything when people exactly. you know, are using this. I'm like, this has been around for a while. People Forever. think only now are people enslaved yeah. to their phones. No, no, no. This has been something people have been discussing yeah. for a long time. What was it back in Because he's talking about like electric blankets. Yeah, yeah. At that time. Yeah. Like we're talking about like, like we're so disconnected from the like, natural like world. Like laptops. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because of an electric blanket, yeah. we're so disconnected from the natural from yeah. the natural world. Yeah, I see his point. And like, you know, he talks about he's like, I like being cold, you know, it's good. It's feeling something. Isn't it kind of weird that that we're animals yet we never allow ourselves to feel uncomfortable temperatures or uncomfortable smells or uncomfortable sights or anything you know yeah everything is so uh sanitized i like the cold my god i never realized i don't want a blanket it's fun being cold i can snuggle up against you even more because it's cold all sorts of things occur to you turn on that electric blanket and it's like taking a tranquilizer it's like being lobotomized by watching television
these comforts that we we love and appreciate so much because of human evolution how we've progressed right yeah. is that for him it kind of like lobotomizes you mm -hmm. they talk a lot about being in a dream reality right mm -hmm. so you're kind of like you're not really here i understand that right mm -hmm. like so this whole electric blanket discussion the guy's like well you know i like being comfortable new york is cold mm -hmm. i quite like the electric blanket because new york is cold yeah and life is hard and life is and hard <laughs> there's so many hard things yeah. and so yeah some comforts i really <laughs> yeah. appreciate yeah. because life is insane can be quite abrasive yeah. and he's like yeah it's true i completely understand that. i like those comforts too mm -hmm. However, the truth is, it does take away from living naturally. Mm -hmm. He's talking about how his one uh, theater uh, producer or theater director, Gorbowski or whatever, is talking about how he, that, or the, his friend, quit you know, working in the theater because he just felt like everyone's performing. acting and performing all the time now in their normal lives anyway, that it makes theater kind of superfluous and then just like, yeah. you know, what do you say, yeah, because... scene, you know, it's just... It's too yeah. much. It's, it's not necessary because everyone's performing all the time now. With all of these comforts that we do gain, you know, gain, mm -hmm. right? Things become much more artificial, mm -hmm. I guess. You can do everything from the safety of your couch. You can order food. You can order anything. You can you can start dating people, never have to leave your couch. You can, you know, you yeah. can eat. You can do everything basically. You can work from your couch. You can yeah. never have to leave your, your living room. Back to the electric blanket thing. He's yeah. like, well... You know, firstly, if you didn't have an electric blanket, you would be aware of the elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then secondly, you'd realize, okay, it's super cold. I'm mm -hmm. cold. Oh my God, what yeah. do I do? Let's yeah. go get like piles and piles of blankets and yeah. whatever. And then you start thinking, oh man, is my partner okay? Honey, yeah. are you, are you yeah. okay? Are you warm? Yeah. You know, that yeah. just like that extra. It, it takes you out of yourself. Yeah. Even to people you care about. And then to even people you don't even know. He says, yeah. what about people that are outside that don't have a place to live? Yeah. They must be even more cold. Yeah. Know? Like you start thinking about, oh my God, there are homeless yeah. people who are out there right now. I at least have this blanket. Yeah. I have my own place, but that person is outside. Yeah. Those things, he says, you wouldn't really think about with those comforts, right? Yeah. Because those comforts kind of like take you into that dream world where you don't really think about it. He even talks about food too, right? Mm -hmm. Like eating so much where he makes yeah. an example of like the Tibetan monks. Yeah. It takes two hours to eat yeah. with them. And you like, you have to chew everything mm -hmm. and, you know, taste really basically what we now call mindful eating. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're there for two hours mm -hmm. and you really can sense that. Yeah, I'm full now. But here you're just scoffing you're it down. You don't even eat. taste it. Yeah, you don't, you don't taste even that. taste it. You're just eating to eat piles and piles of food. Yeah. And you're removed from mm -hmm. the nourishment that yeah. what this is supposed to serve yeah. treating food more like what it's supposed to be yeah. versus just another thing with, that removes you from yeah. from reality that keeps you into the in the in the daydream yeah wally's character actually starts to open up more i think he's he really lets his guard down as he gets more comfortable with andre as andre is being just so raw and open and from the get-go basically just boom laying it all out yeah. you know which is a hard thing to do Especially yeah. with someone you don't even know for years. But I think he's gone through so many exactly. experiences lately that have just <laughs> uncracked like, him. This is me. Or cracked him. Yeah, you know, he's cracked like, him I open. Can't even, can't I can't me. even hold can't, back. Well, I can't close yeah. up again. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's kind of like The Matrix, yeah. Neo, right? <laughs> yes. You can't go back. That movie's to the, great because that can relate to anything. It can relate to anything. <laughs> I'm relating it in this way by, you know, how the movie is like, well, mm -hmm. once you see certain things, once mm -hmm. you experience certain things, going yeah. back to yeah. what you, how you lived before. Feels like a hard. fantasy. Feels like an illusion. Yeah. When he talks about some girl who was associated with the Kennedys died and we were just talking yeah. about that, this death, it was awful, but we were laughing about yeah. it, you know? Yeah. And because we just cannot bring ourselves to deal with difficult emotions. People mm -hmm. don't want to deal with difficult yeah. emotions. And if ever difficult things come up, then we have to kind of um, pacify mm -hmm. um, to pacify them with a joke, mm -hmm. you know? When you are someone like Andre, you've kind of like accumulated so much mm -hmm. life experience and it's changed you so much yeah. that you can't, it's, you are literally incapable mm -hmm of playing the roles anymore yeah. that we are supposed to play when we are around people yeah. even people that we love you know even with family like yeah. i think a lot of us find ourselves playing roles and where sometimes if your family doesn't even know you and andre he's so raw and so honest with himself now and doing so much um like going through all these experiences really challenging who he is to the core that that's when he's able to say like honestly i i'm kind of i kind of sicken myself and I also feel like I haven't done anything with myself uh, and my life and everything. And Wally's like, how could you say that? You've done all these amazing experiences, very successful career, all this kind of stuff. Your family, you've got a lot of connections and friends that will hook you up and you do all these things with all these people. 
And he's like, but really, I just feel like a, like a, like a compare himself to like a creep or like a, <laughs> it was like yeah. a, the Nazi architect worked for Hitler, you know, like he's like, I've got because he's uh, I mean, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe he's being too hard on himself, but he's also just so honest with himself that he's willing to accept like that. I think a lot of people, if they're honest with themselves, would feel like how much have I really achieved in life? Does any of it matter or mean anything or what has it done in the greater scheme of things or who am I? Have I changed or grown at all? I don't really, or, you know, am I the same person or, you know? Um, I think the willing, the willingness to constructively criticize yourself, I think is something that we both appreciate a lot mm -hmm. and, and we try to practice mm -hmm. personally. The reason why this conversation is so good in this movie is because it, it has the ingredients that you need to have a conversation that can go this deep, which is at least one person being willing to just lay it all out there. Yeah. And be willing to admit being foolish, ignorant, uh, immoral, unkind, superficial, uh, spoiled. selfish, spoiled, yeah. yeah, out of touch. You, you have these things and then that allows for a lot more honest reflection, right? But so yeah. many people just don't really want to think. They might be willing to kind of admit a little bit of wrongdoing or mistakes here and there, but they really don't want to dig too, too deep. And he's digging to the core, yeah. you know? And then, then that allows other people around them to feel more comfortable to do the same also. Yeah. But so many conversations either don't really have the time to get that far, to, yeah. to it takes time to dig that deep, or they, they don't have the, you know... Um, there isn't that kind of reciprocity, reciprocity, because maybe the people are different. Yeah, the different, yeah, different people that don't find that kind of stuff engaging or interesting or it's too much or... He speaks about, he brings up different people um, who are in the same kind of, who move in the same circles, and he talks about how he would look at them and judge them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he would then look at them and realize that, well, hold on, hold yeah. on. I'm exactly I'm like I'm those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you think about it, this guy has been to, he's been traveling around mm -hmm. like crazy. India, mm -hmm. Poland, mm -hmm. um, I think was it Ireland or something yeah. like that. Just yeah, different countries all the time. Desert. Tibet, he's spending yeah. um, time in the desert. Yeah. He gets this um, famous playwright or, or someone yeah. in the, who's some famous guy yeah. to get him a group of people yeah. to go spend like time in the forest. Mm -hmm. And he finds a forest for them. Mm -hmm food to eat in that forest and mm -hmm. a specific type of people. I yeah. mean, that is a level of privilege that mm -hmm. not a lot of people yeah. have access to. Right. And this is something that where he's kind of like the willingness to con to, to reflect on himself openly. Yeah. Um, this is something that I like because it brings him to the reality that, you know what, I'm actually, I have a lot of yeah. privilege, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so then am I really a good person? Are, yeah. are these things that I actually yeah. did even meaningful? Because yeah. I mean, are they mean, when do yeah. they become meaningful? Yeah. If I, I, you know what I mean? The people I'm judging that seem so in an illusion and don't realize their privilege, maybe they're thinking the same thing about me. And they're yeah. seeing me like going off and doing all these travels and finding myself. And yeah. really they think, well, what a pompous, spoiled, privileged, layabout, useless, you know, you're not even doing anything anymore. You're just going around finding yourself, whatever exactly. that means. You know, maybe they're thinking the same thing about you have him. a freaking family. Yeah. And what are you doing? Yeah. Traveling yeah. around. You, 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 you make a scary here. flag that, that, that ruins your going away party that your wife put on for you. And then you yeah. go travel, you know, like, yeah. what, what are you doing? You, you're kind of like, you're, uh, being a, 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 like a, a very uh, like an unhealthy kind of um, not a very yeah a, a kind person to probably his family or people that rely on him or, yeah and he, kind I mean, of he has goes kids off and does things yeah like yeah. he literally has kids yeah. and and he's coming back he even says you know honestly it really wreaked havoc on me and yeah. I'm thinking how about the kids you know yeah. what I mean how about yeah. the wife yeah you know but these are things that he thinks about yeah and I like that. And he opens up to this guy about these very things and yeah. why he's feeling kind of a, like a failure. Yeah. And I really like that because I think it's so hard for us to look at ourselves and criticize the mm -hmm. things that we we have done mm -hmm. or things, failures, our failures or things that we don't feel proud to have done, mm -hmm. which there are so many of those things mm -hmm. I know yeah. for me. I think we all have those. Yeah, yeah, we all have those things. But I think it's really tough to unpack those things, yeah. even individually you mm -hmm. know in the privacy of our own heads yeah um mm -hmm. some of these things you just prefer not to talk about but yeah. like it, it is such a an important part of your life i think people who are willing to just take accountability for their flaws and the mistakes they made and the possibility that they are just as vile mm -hmm. as the person that they could perceive to be vile mm -hmm. people who are willing to actually look at that and be open to looking at themselves through that kind yeah. of negative lens that they may be viewing other people yeah. i think those people are the ones that are really that really that might actually grow from it yeah that will grow from something. from it yeah. and become better yeah. you know like obviously being human be being human is insanely difficult mm -hmm. 
Um, and what is better anyway? But like, as long as you're moving forward, I think, and moving forward is that just kind of like constantly reflecting on yourself and how you are as a person mm -hmm. and owning up to the fact that, you know, you're not better than the next person. No. I was just thinking about, obviously, I, I thought about myself, how I kind of used to be in the past. I think there's this time in your life when you because you are the way that you are, you have either this assumption that people will be like you too. You know, if I'm like this, therefore everybody right. is like that because we're all human. Mm -hmm. Or then, you, and, and if you meet someone who isn't like you, you think, well, what's wrong with this person? You know what I mean? Yeah. At this moment. Instead of what's right with them and what's wrong with me. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and instead of, well, people are different and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing you were saying before, I love that because, you know, Andre's out here. He's already gone through all of these experiences and he's just, he cannot be anything but yeah. vulnerable and yeah. open. And yeah. so he's sharing yeah. everything. But then the other guy. Wally. Yeah. Wally is for, you know, like a, an hour in, he's just asking questions the whole time. Yeah. He doesn't want to share too much. Yeah. And I think that's okay. Like, yeah. I think it's not yeah. easy to, even with your closest friends, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Because even he says it well, he's like, you know, sometimes you just, I wish that people could share uh, yeah. things that they're challenges that they're going through. Yeah. Because then sometimes you, you, you realize that you're not alone mm -hmm. in the hell that you may be living in. Maybe other people are living that same hell and it will give you some comfort to know yeah. that at least I'm not alone. And it will give you comfort to know that you can turn to someone who will mm -hmm. understand exactly what it is you're going through mm -hmm. and give you the support that speaks to that reality because they've personally experienced it. But we are not vulnerable enough to allow ourselves to get to that point. And so then you are all, we're all here living our lo alone, yeah. you know, privately in pain, yeah. privately suffering, and then presenting ourselves as perfectly okay to people that we should be seeking support from. Yeah. So anyway, you're tired now. So, so this is some stuff that we thought about uh, dinner with Andre and a lot of stuff that just reminded it. us about our own yeah. lives. Yeah, we're still watching it. We're still watching it, we're which is why, it. again, no to. uniform. No uniform. <laughs> you know, that's a lot to, to munch on. So let us know what you guys think about what we had to share here. Uh, if you've seen the movie, what you got from it as well. Share your thoughts on our thoughts down below or share your thoughts on anything. Yeah. yeah she's so tired. Can't even do her lines. I mean, uh, well, you know... <laughs> I was just thinking right now people aren't really commenting and That's I get true. it because we're new and we don't yeah. really have a lot of subscribers and true. we're not really expecting no. to get like old no. you know, people in the comments getting a, clapping yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. if, ever, if ever we get to a point where people are, are commenting, I really would like to know what kind of person you are, mm -hmm. person watching. Yeah. Like, would you, do you see yourself in Dinner with Andre? Please comment down below and yeah. share your thoughts on our thoughts yeah. and your thoughts on the movie. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. Until next time though, thanks for watching. And Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. It's a wrap.